These lively street scenes were taken in Karachi by a British soldier whose name is no longer known. Sometime between 1942 and the departure of British troops on the independence and partition of India in 1947. They take us back to a time when there were hardly any motor vehicles and the city centre was dominated by pedestrians and horse-drawn traffic. The filmmaker had a sharp eye for street life such as this little curbside madrasa. A soldier seems to be on official business and others go about their work. The animals of the street seem to have fascinated him, from horses and donkeys to this straying calf. Look carefully at the next shot for a performing bear. Motorised transport seems mostly to have been in the form of trolleys and trams. One day the soldier comes across a convoy of carts drawn by camels, about to carry pipes to some building project. He and his friends seem to be motorised, with access to jeeps and trucks. They seem to like shopping in the town. And while they're out, they stop for a shoe shine. Not everyone can afford to go shopping, though. He enjoys the life in the parks. He also admiringly shoots colonial buildings, such as the Imperial Bank of India, which he may have been guarding to judge from the trucks outside it. This is the new cotton exchange, built in 1942. Somewhat older is the Frere Hall, which was used as town hall at this time. Here are some more camels. One rainy day, he decides to film Clifton Beach. And here he finds the Lady Lloyd Pier, dating from 1920. People still can take the air there. Perhaps it's stopped raining now. He also films the YMCA and the army quarters in the Karachi cantonment. There seem to be some local boys hanging around the cantonment and he and his friends seem to strike up a friendship with them.
His interest in animals shows again. This one seems to be a pet. Here's another friend, I presume. It isn't clear whether these washermen are working in or for the cantonment or not, but the filmmaker is interested in them. His own washing hangs by his truck. There are local tradespeople around, too. I wonder if these distinctive hats could help identify the men. One day he seems interested in the parade ground, but then what seems to have been a quite peaceful routine is broken. There are piles of luggage everywhere, and the men go somewhere on a train journey. They pass an RAF camp. and they spot an irrigation system. Then it's time to stop for drinks on a station platform. There's something swimming in the river. And it rains. And now we cut to the soldier's journey home to Britain. They obviously enjoy the leisure. At one point they're approached by traders on small boats. I wonder if this is Aidan. There's no mistaking this, however. It's a Suez Canal. And this is the Suez Monument. And finally, just as he runs out of film, the soldier shoots another headland. Surely this is Gibraltar.